Welcome back to the Screensavers. Coming up in this half hour, Megan thinks you may underappreciate your mouse. So she's going to show you how hard it works. And we're going to see how to use PHP, a web programming language, to track how many people are on your website. An easy way to do a counter. And we're going to see how mm -hmm. high we can make Krista Bonus counter go. We're going to make his counter go high. Let's talk about Wi-Fi. We've tried this before. Actually, I know because there was a Pringles can lying around for years. We have never done sets. this. What? Well, wait, haven't we tried Not this? Me. No, I actually played around with some other antennas. Okay. Some actually, some pre-manufactured antennas. Yoshi's played around. This is like the. This is yeah. The I Bazooka this, 4000. Yeah, I've been bringing this around everywhere. This is a five-mile directional Wi-Fi antenna. You can five miles. It's five miles. How do they know it's five miles? Because it well, because it says so. <laughs> and they wouldn't lie at Buffalo, would they? I don't know. When Buffalo, yeah. You aim. Now, the, the thing about this is kind of cool is it's both ways. So you can put it on your computer and get a signal from five miles away and get on the Internet, or you can spy on people mm -hmm. from five miles away. It's like a shotgun mic. I can see what you're doing online. So how much did you pay for that? This is very, very expensive. I don't know. It's like 1000 bucks. And then more like 400 bucks. 400 It's expensive. Yeah. 500 We'll split the difference. I got a better idea for you. My math's not so good. <laughs> yeah. We'll split the difference. Can we make one of these? We can't make one of these. We make something awfully close. Okay. We just love playing around with this. You I do. I love that. No, I, I want that. I'm glad we still have it. Okay. The original one out there, right? Uh, one of the places. I can't believe you're eating those. Well, somebody got to. We should hey, point don't get close up on my trip. There's something we should point out. There's two things disgusting. we should point out before we start talking about this. Yes. One is that there is a foul and toxic residue left over from a Pringles can antenna. On my tongue. Exactly, the Pringles. Two yeah. is that, in theory, the FCC only allows you, it's only legal to use <laughs> approved chips. antennas, antennas that have been certified by the FCC <laughs> with your particular Oh, so what car. we're doing here is illegal. Technically. Oh, well, that's all right. <laughs> it's, only technically it's interesting. Illegal. One of the things that came out at DEF CON this year is a lot of them talked about really trying to discourage homemade antennas for a couple of reasons. One, they're not as efficient. Two, they tend to be abused. People tend to make really giant antennas right. or overpower them with amplifiers. And, and then, you know, you, you start, you're, the cows start falling over dead. Well, in the the field cows don't start falling over dead, but maybe you make it difficult for people to use their, their you know, their wireless car, their wireless know, the cows phones. cows fell over dead next door to me. I... Yes, but that had to do with the anthrax problem. <laughs> Anyhow, these are, the other thing about Pringles can antennas is they're kind of a mess to bitch. To, to, to a mess to what? Nothing. <laughs> But they're made day. out of cardboard. Don't they need to be made out of metal? metal? That's just as interesting because they have a radio that you build for the inside of it. Um, kind of a mess to build. So what's the point of the cardboard? The point of the cardboard is, is something I've never really understood. It's not a conductor despite the fact that you have that sort of faux metallic. Yeah. Uh, it's cardboard. Even it's with cardboard. the foil inside. Yeah. What you do do is, okay, inside of there is what we call an end connector. And that's a said, very dude. low loss <laughs> connector. And what you do is put a piece of copper wire in that that brings it up to about the middle of the can, the center of the can. That's, uh -huh. And you build a radiator essentially out of a uh, 16-inch wire. And a Pringles aluminum. lid. <laughs> yeah, a Pringles lid, a piece of plastic, some wire, and a couple nuts. Yeah. You put the thing together like this. I think we're the couple of nuts here. <laughs> no, no, no. No? You put it together like this, yeah. and you basically attach it to your card. So really, this is just a form factor. This isn't mm -hmm. really doing anything. It's a way anything. to hang a, a Yagi antenna. Okay. It's a way to basically hang it. And, and, and the antenna's the inside there. Yeah. Okay. The ham radio guys are now typing, it's not a Yagi antenna. And whatever it is, it's a wire inside a can. The second generation of that, and I've got to give props out to Flickinger and those guys. From, Look at uh, this. Look at is this. actually a coffee can antenna. We showed you that mess of parts. There's a lot of fabrication involved in a Pringles can antenna. The one thing we really like about the coffee can antenna is, yeah. one, it's a little more efficient, and two, can we get a shot inside of there? It's There's nice. our little end connector down at and the base. It. it uses the, and the copper of the can. wire. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. And you know what? That's all, and there's three parts. We solder our piece of copper into the end connector. Yeah. Right? The end connector gets mounted to the can. Mm -hmm. If you mount it in the right place, you're done. Now, uh, is this directional? I mean, is it coming out the it end, is or is it, is it, is it, you're okay. going to get a directional, it's going to be sort of a lobe on either side, okay. but it's primarily a directional antenna. Okay. So if you, if you want to irradiate the neighborhood, this is not the kind of antenna you want to do. If you want to sit and maybe be connect your house and somebody else's house Perfect two miles that. away, Perfect. that's what this is for. Even give you some privacy because you, you kind of have to be in line of sight. To you kind of have to be. Yeah. You probably pick it up. Now, the trick is having to get this connected to your computer. The nightmare, actually, is getting this connected to your computer. Let me whoops, pull this off over here. This is called a pigtail. 
I thought I had that in front of me. You've got to have the same. Let there's, me, there's, can there's, I just there's a couple problems. Card? If you try to use, you can go ahead and yank the card. Okay. If you try to use regular coax cable, about 10 feet of coax cable is going to completely absorb your 30 milliwatt, 24, 2.4 gigahertz signal from your card. Well, it's that's just going to no, dissipate. That's no good. So you've got to get some decent high M cable. The, the very, stuff a lot of people use LM400. Low resistance. These are the end connectors we've been talking about that mount into the cans. And on the end of this is what they call a pigtail. And a pigtail is a specialized adapter. Now, the FCC made every different 802.11b card manufacturer at least try to use a different connector. So there's no standard for their antennas. For there's no standard. Matter of fact, they're all pretty much different. Why do they make them all use different uh, pigtails? Well, remember what I talked in the beginning about how they wanted certification standards. They don't want. They you. want. They they only want you to use a an approved combination of a card and an antenna because they don't want you to exceed certain power limits. So they don't want you making their own antennas, basically. It, well, they don't want you to make your own antennas, and they want you mixing and matches antennas from right. different places. Okay. Now, first of all, most 802.11 cards don't have an external antenna jack. You can try to attach one. It's a pain, okay. trust me. So This is a Buffalo. It does. Yes. Most because people, Buffalo makes those big external antennas. Most people use the Orinoco and the Lucents are the most common okay. for, for people who I have a Lucent in my, uh, in my Mac and my... Mm -hmm. uh, Wi-Fi box, uh, you know, my airport. Yeah, so and I those actually have a, and that's okay. one of the first mods people started doing these yeah. antennas for. These pigtails, this white cable here, and the connectors are going to cost you anywhere from fifteen to forty dollars if you shop around. But you got to get one that matches your card. Exactly, you got to make sure it matches your card, and you have to make sure you have a jack that'll fit the cable you use. And while you're at it, I don't recommend buying these. They are a mess, a nightmare to solder together. Buy one pre-assembled and buy enough so of the cable to get to where you want to I guess go. what we've learned is you could do this, but you probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't, and the, the one of the reasons the guys, especially from the from the uh, the wireless community wireless group say you shouldn't do this because they're basically afraid of the FCC getting really upset and hammering down on right. everybody. On Wi-Fi in general. Yeah. But it's really cool to put this on top of your car and drive around because people think you're completely insane. Well, it's really cool to find out how many people. One, you can you can find open networks. A lot of people who are doing this are people who are trying to secure their office. They're trying to figure out if some Yahoo came in and oh, interesting. You know, put an Apple Airport base station in the middle of their right. secure network, thereby right. rendering it. Exposed. You attach that stumbler to this baby, and you've got a powerful comment. I got a whopping, counting the cost of the coffee. If you, if you paid for the coffee, matter of fact, Leah, while you're eating, why don't you have some coffee? Okay, <laughs> it's about, uh, if you, if you got the, count the cost of the coffee, it's about $18 in parts. That's good. Uh, if you don't count the <laughs> cost you get of the, the coffee, coffee, it's about 9 I, Why do I feel like Broderick Crawford? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Adventures deep into the abyss. <laughs> I don't this is step one to build your own cantana. Check out. I got oh, an article got with that, all the Steve. links and some of the problems we've got. Next week, I'm going to show you a second cantana, and we're going to use net stumbler, and we're going to show you how you can read the signal level, cantana. and we're going to compare it to our fabulous Buffalo antenna. All right, we're going to go war driving. Yes, no, we we're not going to go war Next driving. Next on the highway patrol. I have no interest in war driving. Stay where you are, folks. Before you run out to buy a wireless PC card, we're going to tell you the real deal. It's this week's tech ads. Yes, sir. And coming up next, you want to know the best way to select your files? You think you do, so do you? Well, Morgan has a quick selection trick you're guaranteed to use when the screensavers continue.